Hello everybody, this is Gregory with How I Lost Over 100 Pounds and I've kept it off for 30 plus years where there should be no hesitation in your weight loss and maintenance. Today I'm going to pause at the question, why are you snacking? Now before we begin, if you need help with weight loss, contact me through the Clarity FM link found here in the episode notes. Also check out my website which has hundreds of articles and recipes. If you like movies, i got a podcast on movies called The Cinema Rag on Apple and Spotify. Rate and review it. And lastly, if you appreciate my content, there is a link to make a donation. Why are you snacking? Now, some of you don't snack at all. Some of you are like, yeah, I just eat three times a day. Or if you're fasting, which of course I recommend, you're doing two times a day. Some of you are constantly snacking, either because you were raised with the idea that you need to keep your metabolism burning by constantly eating. So you eat six small meals or you eat three meals and then a snack between the two meals or even a snack before bedtime. Some of you are wired that way to believe that. Some of you do it because you always are hungry. You're always hungry. I mean, there are people who eat dinner at 7 and get hunger pangs at uh, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I've never been that way, but there are some people who are just constantly hungry. I would tell you as a whole, snacking is not good for you because for several reasons. One is by snacking, you are just increasing the amount of calories that you're eating. See, snacks lots of times might be like some nuts or a granola bar or fruit or whatever. But if you're eating two snacks a day, and some of you guys have bigger snacks. If you're eating two snacks a day, that is increasing the amount of calories that you're taking in each day. So that in itself, it's like the, the, the flip of fasting. See, when you're fasting, and go to the videos we have on the, on, on the benefits of fasting, just by the nature of you eliminating breakfast, or if you're doing a flip fast and you're eliminating dinner, but, but just by eliminating one meal and only eating two meals, you really have to make a concerted effort to pack in the calories to compensate for that third meal. So just by skipping a meal and skipping that snack if you're snacking, you're reducing your overall daily calories. So snacking increases your calories per day. And weight loss is very simple. right? You burn more calories than you take in. The other thing is with snacking, it increases the amount of insulin in your bloodstream because every time you're eating, insulin is going to be released to help move the, the, the sugar that you've just ingested into the organs, into the skeletal muscles. Insulin is the key that allows the sugar to be shunted to these places where they need to be. And so type 2 diabetes is the key ain't working. And so now you have too much insulin and too much blood sugar in the body. And so insulin is fat storing. So the more that you have it in your bloodstream, the more likely you're going to gain weight. And so if you're always snacking, unless you are eating keto snacks, which is possible, maybe your your snacks are nuts or you know bacon, something that has no sugar at all. Even though I think some sugar, there's some sugar in bacon, but then then you're not necessarily spiking insulin. But as a whole, the majority of people who are snacking are typically doing chips, granola bars, you know, something that certainly has carbs in it. So you're in, you're increasing the amount of insulin in your bloodstream. When it comes to the hunger, sometimes you're just hungry because you're just eating too much carbs. And when you transition to a more fat-based, low-carb diet, the hunger pangs go away because your body is getting enough satiety. We can all eat a box of cereal with no problem. We can all eat gigantic bag of chips because they're not filling. But if you're eating very fatty foods, whether it be full fat Greek yogurt or nuts or steak or eggs or, you know, we can't overeat and eat a 64 ounce porterhouse. We just, you can't do it. You can't do it. So typically when you shift to a more fatty diet, a healthy fat diet, of course, your, your, your hunger pangs are going to go away and you're going to feel fuller going to feel more full like for example let's say you eat pasta at seven o'clock which is all carbs you're more likely to get hungry again at 10 o'clock whereas if you're eating a 32 ounce porterhouse yeah you're going to be Ooh, afterwards so i would tell you snacking that's very 1980s paradigm 1990s paradigm kind of like how we used to think fat was bad and so everything was low fat high sugar you know, think thanks to ansel keys go to that episode on ansel keys and so you're, you're kind of adhering to an, uh, an old paradigm. And sure, you're still going to find places like Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig and other outlets, other YouTube outlets, telling you to continue to snack. But the science is pretty clear nowadays that we want to limit our eating windows 
and we want to limit the amount of insulin in our body. So simply, if you're not snacking and you're just eating every six hours while you're awake, that gives you more time your body isn't going to have insulin and that puts your body into somewhat of a fasting state, not really for six hours, but it's just better to eat only when you're hungry. Let's strip it all down. Let's be real. That's the beauty of kind of like the old school paleolithic fasting. How about we just don't eat until we're hungry? But certainly if you feel like you need to eat every meal, just eat three meals a day. And I think overall it's going to help you with your weight loss and your weight management. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you snack, you don't snack, what's your take? Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.